For two weeks now, Cleveland officials and city council members have been throwing around a lot of numbers and questions during their budget hearings. They discuss issues affecting everything from the police to the airport with implications for all of Greater Cleveland. Joining us right now is 3 News contributor and managing editor for, of news for Signal Cleveland, our old buddy Mark Namick. Mark, it's good to see you. Hey, glad to have me. I'm glad you're having me back. Yeah, all the thing. I, it works both ways, certainly. Yeah. $1.9 billion budget we're talking about here. I said they've been talking about it for two weeks. You've actually broken it down into hours, though. Yeah, our <laughs> team at Signal Cleveland spent 66 hours monitoring and logging a lot of that meeting, and that is a true 66 hours. And remember, these budget hearings are often about a chance for council members to really pick at those different departments because they don't get the administration before them and they pretty much have to answer those questions. What has jumped out to you in terms yeah, of the Three things really. The first is the number of vacancies across the city and, and we've talked about it before, uh, especially in the police department. Hundreds of uh, vacancies in all these departments cannot be filled and so they're balancing the budget in part by just eliminating those positions. And on that police vacancy, they're spending a million dollars on youth programs, hopefully to create a pipeline and bring and attract youth into the police department. A second thing that stood out was something that we've not heard often from an economic development director, and that was throwing shade on tax breaks that these developers get to invest in downtown. So they were calling out the fact saying there's really not moving the bar on the economics of Clevelanders. So that could infect, you know, a lot of projects. So that tax break that would normally uh, you know, be, right. be get, go into the city coffers used to, you know, was going into the ability to pay back the project that may disappear. You're right. Thirdly, how inefficient the city really is. You hear departments talk about the fact that they're still doing things on paper, you mm -hmm. know, and, and manually moving numbers sure. around. You don't hear that second thing you talk yeah. about the tax breaks, which yeah. is interesting. What about the airport? Now, there's been talk about that as well. We've actually seen an uptick in passenger travel at the airport. Well, so we, we had about 8.7 million passengers come through. That was announced a few weeks ago. That compares to the high, which is pre-pandemic, of about 10 million. They said at budget hearings this week, the airport officials said they hope to get closer to 10 million this year. But something we've been without since April of last year has been a director of the airport. Right. Uh, they said during budget hearings and told Signal Cleveland this week that they plan to name a new director uh, by the end of March. They have three candidates, uh, uh, including those from similar sized airports. That's a big step. And then you have, you know, hanging out there, of course, is the, uh, the master plan, this $2 billion plan that they can't really build without a director and without buy-in from the airport. And this budget needs to be signed, sealed, and delivered by April 1st, correct? Yeah, so this week you'll probably, what they call the reconciliation, both sides come together, and I, I think you're going to have a fairly smooth process. They should get that wrapped up, and they're going to talk about some other budgeting issues like community block yeah. grant. That's the money that goes into neighborhood groups. But the budget, they'll probably sort it out by the end of uh, this week, if not early next week. Okay. Mark Namick, as always, great to see you. We will see you again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Sure.